And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the home for chase race number seven of the NSRA Hershey's Cup Series. This is Michigan International Speedway. We're getting ready for more speedway action as we get ready for knockout qualifying. 20 drivers battling for seven spots in this week's main event. First car off pit road was the 52 of Seth Cole, so we'll jump to him. As several other drivers now being pushed out into their pit stalls on pit road before they get them sent out for their qualifying run. A lot of teams formulating for next season, but we still got this season to settle out and right now it's looking like it's the 61 team of Anthony McCurry's championship to lose. Be interesting to see what they do coming into today's race because Right now, their finishes since the chase began have been really good. They had a win at Taylor Swift Superdome. They ended up finishing second place in a photo finish last week at Zen Joltis. And they finished second place the week before that at Lime Rock. So they have had a number of really good finishes up in the top three in the last few weeks. Trying to continue on with that consistency, plus the fact a number of drivers that were trying to run them down for the points lead had trouble last week at Zen Joltis. As Seth Cole comes down to put down its first timed lap. First timed lap will be a 39.059, so just almost a 39 flat. So with a single car run there, expect to see drivers definitely hit the low 38s if they can get into a draft of somebody's. You see Austin Guype, Joshua Michaels. They've just now come on track. I believe they're now currently on the clock. Michaels in the 10. 36th in the point standings. He has 21 starts this season of the current 32 starts that uh, races that there have been. The next closest to him, I believe, is Chris Dowd with 16 starts. So Michaels has made the most races of the drivers outside the top 35 in points. And he jumps to the top of the leaderboard. Got a little bit of help off the slipstream of Kyle Matthews. And he just got beaten, though. Top of the leaderboard, the 32 of Stephen Pollard the third. And I'm not certain who Stephen got his draft off of. But a 38.431. So I told you low 48s. And right there you see it. 38.4 for the C&J Energy Resources Ford. SP3, former winner this season, has been Quite a while since we've seen, seen him take part in a main event race. Trying to make one today as a couple more drivers jump to the top of the leaderboard. 37.3 for Joshua Michaels. McIntosh up there now. Sam McMillan, Kyle Matthews, and Chris Dowd, who had a solid run last week at Zen Joltis. Right now, sixth fastest, running behind Joseph Srigley. Seth Cole to his outside. He can avoid hitting the break here behind the 05. He's going to have himself another really fast lap as Chris Dowd in that Sharpie Chevrolet. Let's see what he lays down this time. Is it good enough to beat a 37-3? 37-4. That puts him second. And Kyle Matthews, top of the leaderboard. Another driver that we haven't seen really race in the main event the last couple of weeks. And he just jumped up there at 36.47. One. That is a fast lap time. Trying to put all three of the Retro Racing Enterprises machines into the main event here at Michigan. Michaels in second, McMillan third, fourth Pollard, fifth Citadino. That could change though because there's like a single file draft just ahead of these drivers there. You see Citadino jumps up to second. Johnny Gardner up to fourth, and McIntosh up to third. Now Michaels down to fifth. McMillan sixth, Stephen Paul with the third, right now in seventh. Top seven have hit the 36s. Seth Cole, eighth place, has yet to hit a 36. Might watch here for the 98 of Austin Guype, the 0-1 of Zach Flickinger to maybe lay down some fast lap times if they can get the draft off the 41 of McMillan, the 32 of Stephen Pollard, the third. And coming to the line, let's see what they do. 
11th fastest for McMillan. Guype. That was his fastest lap, but he's 12th. Seth Cole just jumped up into the top seven, as did Chris Dowd. That eliminated out Sam McMillan and puts Joshua Michaels on the bubble spot. Michael Norman right now sitting on pit road. I don't know, has that three car turned a lap yet? <clears throat> yes, he has, 14th fastest. But I think the session may be over. Lap time, was it counted for Galligan? I don't think it was. And I think the session may be complete. And it looks like Chris Dowd's gonna get the final transfer spot. Right now, seventh fastest. 15 seconds remaining, and I think that's just for cool down. It looks like Kyle Matthews, John Cedadino, Joseph Strigley, Dallas McIntosh, Johnny Gardner, Seth Cole, and Chris Dowd will be the seven to transfer, and they're bringing that 46 to pit row before anything else happens to it, and there you have it. Session complete. And we have our seven drivers that will transfer in. Kyle Matthews will put all three Retro Race Enterprises entries in the main event. John Cittadino, that single car entry's in. Same for Joseph Srigley. Dallas McIntosh in the main event, along with Johnny Gardner. He'll put all three of the Young Motorsports machines in there. Seth Cole's Tweenix entry in sixth. And Chris Dowd makes his second straight main event race. As he will get the final transfer spot by just about 1 100th over Joshua Michaels, who's gonna miss out along with his teammate Sam McMillan. Also not failing, or also failing to make the race, Stephen Paul III, Zach Flickinger, Sean Galligan, Austin Geip, Michael Norman, Zachary Fitzwater, Jason Nelson, Grace Nakavito, Brandon Gonzalez, Cody Lamas, and Matt McIntyre. So it's time to go racing here at Michigan in our seventh race of the chase. Let's head to the main event right now. And good afternoon, race fans. Welcome here to chase race number seven of the first season of the NCRA Hershey's Cup Series. After today, only three more races, and we will be determining who will be the first champion ever in the Hershey's Cup Series in NCRA competition. We're getting ready here today to go racing in Brooklyn, Michigan at Michigan International Speedway for 30 laps of racing. And as we look at the top left of your screen, these are your chase points coming into today's race. Zen Joltis last week certainly playing a big factor into what the standings look like right now. Anthony McCurry comes in with a 32 point lead over last week's winner from Zen Joltis, Joshua Circuli. He jumped up to second. Noah Cars jumped up to third. He's 36 points back. Fourth place is Benjamin Miles. He jumped up there. And Joshua Lee stayed status quo. He is fifth in points. But if you look down through, you got Kean Eddington, 48 points back. Tim Walsh, 57 points back. Jeremy Jones, he's 67 points back. And then you get down to drivers who there's a big question mark on whether or not they can get themselves back in contention for this championship before the season is over. Mason Powers, 70 points out. Rocco Twyman, 79 points out. And then Blaine Keyes and, J and Jake Baskinger, 93 and 97 points out. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's going to be really tough for Keys and Baskager to both get themselves back up in the hunt with only four races remaining, including today's event. Now, both of them are starting fairly well in this field. The 10th place starting spot for Jake Baskinger, 11th place for Blaine Keys. But here's the problem. Anthony McCurry, the points leader, will be starting on the outside of the front row alongside of today's pole sitter, Carson Scott. Jeremy Jones rolls off from third place. Noah Cars will be rolling off from 9th, and Joshua Circuli starts from the 12th position. So the top three in the point standings are starting this race inside the top 12. Let's show you your uh, remainder of the top 10 that we haven't already talked about. So you've got Carson Scott, who's still looking for his first win of the season. Closest he came was in the Great American Race Daytona 500. Jones there in third, and Dylan Young will line up in fourth place, trying to find victory lane here. He was close at Lime Rock a few weeks ago, but uh, ended up slipping back late. Ryan Acosta will line up in the fifth position. Acosta had a fairly good run at Zenjoltis last week, so he'll try and ride that momentum alongside of Levi McIntyre. He's still trying to find victory lane for the first time this season. And then completing row number four is going to be Leon Alvarez in the nine. And alongside of him, Austin LaPlante, who continues... The good runs, he had another solid outing at Zen Joltis last week. That 51 team 
has been one of the most consistent drivers next to Anthony McCrory in the past five, six weeks or so. And they complete your top ten. You got Noah Cars there in the 42 alongside of Jake Baskinger in the 95. A couple of chasers there, and then you got chasers behind them in row six. Lane Keys alongside of last week's winner Joshua Circuli, who now ties Mason Powers for most wins this season with three. There you see Mason Powers starting not too far back there in that 44 machine. Try to look for his fourth win of the season. There is Rocco Twyman in the 11, 10th in the point standings. Then you got Chasers back here, Benjamin Miles, fourth in the point standings. Key and Eddington, sixth in points, both trying to get themselves back in the title picture. As you move further back, there is Tim Walsh. Tough break last week at Zendolta. Seems like the last four weeks has been bad race, good race, bad race, good race, or vice versa for him as uh, he jumps up in the standings, then he drops in the standings, and now he finds himself 57 points out, mired in seventh in the point standings as we work our way further back, trying to find the remainder of our chase drivers. There's Joshua Lee starting quite a ways back there, fifth in the standings. And then you go all the way back here through the field, and you find the final row of Jessica Shelton, and Seth Cole, and that will be your starting lineup for today's race here at Michigan. 30 laps of racing, and today we go under the caution flag if a wreck happens. So that'll be a welcome change, I'm sure, to these drivers as well. Without further ado, though, let's go down trackside, get the command to fire them up, and get racing here today at Michigan International Speedway. Drivers, start your engines! There's the command to fire them up. The Hershey's Chevy SS pace car will lead him off pit road and we'll get ready here to go racing at Michigan. So for just about everybody in this field that's in the chase, their goal is simple. Two things. One, go to victory lane, obviously. And two, Hope the 61 team wrecks or has a mechanical problem because right now they need the Audi A5 Kyotech team of Anthony McCrory to hit a bump in their road. It has been very smooth sailing for that team in the last few weeks. Ever since they won at Taylor Swift Superdome, they had a second place finish at Lime Rock two weeks ago. Last week at Zen Joltis, another second place finish. Things have seemed to really pan out perfectly for that team. It's like they can do nothing wrong. Well, they got another solid qualifying effort out of their Audi this week, starting the outside of the front row. So we'll see if he can follow that up with another good finish. But drivers behind him like Circuli, Noah Cars, Benjamin Miles, Joshua Leakey, and Eddington, who are still within striking distance to get to him for the points lead. They're hoping. That 61 team can have a struggling race here today at Michigan. We'll see what happens as the pace car peels off. Carson Scott and Anthony McCurry get ready to put us under the green flag for 30 laps of racing. Here we go. Green flag's out. We're underway at Michigan International Speedway. Anthony McCurry got just as good a start as Carson Scott, but now typical Michigan will kick in with the inside lane being the preferred line. And Carson Scott very easily clears Anthony McCurry for the top position. This is a two mile speedway where they will go three wide. They're already three wide further back there. That's William Brock put in the middle between a couple of chasers, Rocco Twyman and Blaine Keys. But this is also a track where it's somewhat spacious, and so maybe we'll settle into a long green flag run, which may mean that pitch strategy could come into play in this race. As the first lap of the day, led by the pole sitter, Carson Scott. Three wide, not too far behind him there. Rocco Twyman charging up the inside line with Mason Wood. And now we may have a battle for the lead. Ryan Acosta has Carson Scott all to his lonesome up there with a separation of about maybe four car lengths back to three wide between Wood Twyman and Leon Alvarez. I don't want to leave this just in case there is a battle for the lead, but this three wide battle just seems too good to miss. And now it's settled out. Wood to third. Strigley going for fourth off of Twyman. Here comes Charles Sanford bringing go or go homer Chris Dowd with him. As they go underneath John Arton almost 
Sliding up into the 24 was the 03 of Sanford. That was a little close. And now Chris Dowd will move into the fifth position. So he's trying to get by Charles Sanford, Mason Powers right there, as well as Joshua Lee holding Gluba. Kyle Matthews finally making a main event race once again. And they're going to start racing up here in the top four. Mason Wood, Joseph Srigley will move to second and third. Ryan Acosta falls back to fourth, and Wood wants more. Here he comes diving to the inside on Carson Scott for the lead. Lap four on the board, and it'll be the lap where our first lead change will take place. The Bass Pro Shops Mobile One Chevrolet of Mason Wood goes out in front. Here at Michigan, Srigley moves to second. Move Carson Scott back to third, but he may not keep that for long, and the caution flag is out. The first caution of the day comes out here on lap number four. And Mason Wood will lead them down to that yellow. With Strigley second, Dowd in third. Looks like fourth place just barely hanging on. It's going to be Carson Scott. No, Ryan Acosta did get that spot from him at the line. Scott will move back to fifth place. Let's see what brought this caution flag out. Oh, and Austin LaPlante in the 51, who's been just so consistent in the last couple of weeks. Looks like his day is going to come to an early end. James Richardson sitting on pit road as well. Blaine Keys in the 48 involved. And well, Anthony McCurry is way back here in the 38th spot. And there's actually damage on the right side of his machine. So he looks like the points leader got caught up in this. Possibly Dylan Young in the 2 as well. It's like the incident taking place out of turn number two, and that may be the final nail in the coffin for Blaine Key's championship hopes. He came into today's race 11th in the standings, 93 points out. If he retires from today's race, there's no doubt in my mind he will exit Michigan more than 100 points out of the points lead, and there's just no way in three races you can bounce back and recover from such a deficit. Pit stops, the order of the day here on lap five. Be interesting to see if this will be the only pit stop these drivers will have to make today. And it'll be interesting to see if it's going to be a gas and go, or are they going to go with, with fresh Goodyear rubber? Gas and go looks like for the 14 of Mason Wood. And he is down and away. Let's jump to our pit lane camera and watch the battle off pit road. Wood looks like he beat out Srigley. And he will beat everybody out. It'll be Wood, Srigley, Twyman comes out third. Then Ryan Acosta, Kyle Matthews, Carson Scott, Chris Dowd, Seth Cole. So it looks like some strategy, perhaps, on the part of Rocco Twyman. He was not up there in the top five when that caution flag came out. There you see Anthony McCrory on pit road, the 61, the points leader. They're going to try and get that car back out there after he apparently sustained some damage. Let's take a look at a replay of what did put a, the, us under this caution flag. As it will be Mason Wood being the leader under this, our first caution of the day here at Michigan. All right, we're looking at Anthony McCurry. Oh, and the incident happened further up. Looks like contact between Blaine Keys, James Richardson sends them up into LaPlante, and then LaPlante gets Anthony McCrory there in the passenger side door. There's Dylan Young involved as well in a wild ride for the 48. Let's rewind that just a little bit and see if we can find out how it actually started. Okay, they were four wide here at Michigan. Okay, three wide is okay. Four wide is a little testy, and here you see, boy, it looked like that six car was really loose on the bottom. And he just couldn't keep it down there. Kept drifting up the track, and that's where he got into keys. Look at that hit for the 48. And then flips it over onto its roof. There's McCrory getting hit in the passenger side door by LaPlante. And Dylan Young absolutely nowhere to go as well for the Blue Deuce. So a five-car incident. I think everybody else got through it. But a five-car incident and a wild tumble out of turn two for Blaine Keys. Puts us under the caution for the first time here today at Michigan. The lights are out atop the pace car. The green flag will wave once again on lap 9 of 30. That should give us 22 laps remaining in today's event. We have three drivers out of the race after the incident we just saw. Austin LaPlante, Blaine Keys, and James Richardson. And that's basically all she wrote for Blaine Keys' championship hopes.
He had a great stretch of momentum heading into the chase, and it just seems like the wheels just fell off the Lowe's Express, if you will, once the chase began. So as we get ready to go green, top 10. Mason Wood still looking for his first win of the season. He's got Joseph Swrigley behind him, Rocco Twyman in third, who I have to believe used some kind of pit strategy. Maybe didn't get the thing completely full of fuel like everybody else because he got off pit road very quickly. Ryan Acosta comes out fourth. Maybe some strategy for Kyle Matthews as well. He picked up a lot of spots. Chris Dowd is sixth. Seventh, Carson Scott. Seth Cole started this race dead last. He's up to eighth place already. Ninth place is Leon Alvarez and tenth is Mason Powers. I'd be very interested to know how the 52 picked up so many spots in the span of just eight laps. Well, technically six laps. Green flag back out, single file restart, so maybe it'll take them a little bit of time before they get crazy again. Rocco Twyman timed the restart perfectly, and he's already going to take second place away from Srigley. Now Srigley's going to get freight train there on the outside line. As Ryan Acosta moves by for third, here comes Kyle Matthews for fourth, and Ryan Acosta wants more. Now he's looking to the inside on Rocco Twyman for the second position. Ryan Acosta has not been to victory lane since the season opening Daytona 500. It has been a 32 race winless streak for that 78 car. He wants to end it today. He'll lead that lap and go to the top of the leaderboard. Good Joshua Lee back there doing some moves there. Going three wide with Mason Powers. And Joseph Srigley and Kyle Matthews gonna take a look to the inside on Ryan Acosta looking for the top position. But Carson Scott got a great run down the back straightaway. Is he gonna think about three wide for the lead heading into three? No, not this time. Kyle Matthews gonna nose out ahead just barely coming off of turn four. Ryan Acosta gonna try and battle back on the high side. Drag race to the line. Half a car length advantage. Kyle Matthews will lead that lap and get a valuable bonus point. Look at Seth Cole there in the 52. He started this race dead last. And in a matter of 11 laps, he's now up to the third position as it's side by side for the lead. This time another chaser taking a turn at the front. Joshua Lee in the Quicken Loans Chevrolet. Fifth in the point standings, 46 points back, trying to take advantage of the fact that Anthony McCurry was caught up in an early incident. And now he's got Seth Cole to the inside line. And now here comes Mason Powers. Three wide. A photo finish right there between the 44 and the 5. They know something about racing side by side to a checkered flag. Think back to Eminem Super Speedway when Mason Powers, oh no, sorry, Coca Cola Speedway, when Mason Powers just barely edged out Joshua Lee, picking up win number three at the time, or number two at the time, sorry. Getting my facts all mixed up here. Holden Gluba now moves to second place, and here comes William Brock into third. Passing Trent Dunham, where did that Rain-X Chevrolet come from? And we talked about Seth Cole, how he started dead last. Well, I'm also noticing the other driver that made up the final row in 41st, Jessica Shelton, is now up in the top 10. She's running in the eighth position, right now in a very precarious spot, three wide in the middle with Baskinger, Joshua Lee, Trent Dunham, Chris Dowd. Not the best place on track to be, but the thing is that we've been able to see them hold three wide. Four wide is the problem spot. Meanwhile, back up towards the front, Shelton's teammate, Charles Sanford, cutting his way through the field. He's now up to fourth place, bringing Jake Baskinger along with him. And now Baskinger will look to the inside for that fourth position. Meanwhile, battle for the lead between the two Golden Corral Chevrolets. William Brock in the seven, Mason Powers in the 44, give the top position to Brock, and look at the run Baskinger got on the inside of Gluba. He's all of a sudden shot right up to second place. Joshua Lee moves to third as, as William Brock checks out on the rest of the field for the moment. Coming to complete lap 14, put lap 15 on the board. Baskiger and Joshua Lee working together here. This is an aerodynamic, draft-reliant racetrack. There you can see it, the big run that Baskiger gets down the back, or the front straightaway. There's no way Brock's gonna be able to block that advance, and Jake Baskiger goes to the top position. Now, Baskiger is a two-time winner this year, 
He'd love to be able to pick up a third win this season, although it seems like even that third win, I'm not certain that would get him back into the title picture. Speaking of title picture, how about Anthony McCurry in that 61 car? We know he had damage from the earlier incident. Has he been able to recover is the question, and there you see the answer. Running all by his lonesome right now, last car on the lead lap in the 39th position. To put into perspective, his lap time last time by was three whole seconds slower than his fastest lap of the day. Right there, that was another tenth slower than his last lap. 39.250 is what he's running. The leader last time by just ran a 36.533, and you just saw the pace car leaving pit road. We're under caution for the second time today, and this is the race back to the yellow flag. Baskinger gonna clear Ryan Acosta. Here comes Dallas McIntosh trying to beat him to the line. He's not gonna be able to do it, I don't think. Nope, outside line prevails that time. And Jake Baskinger will lead us under our second caution of the day at Michigan. Now, this is going to be good news for McCrory as Seth Cole is involved. And he was having such a good run. Started this race dead last, found his way to the front, and now finds himself crunched up. Oh, and his teammate Dylan Pote was involved. So two of the Tweenix drivers involved in this one. And Tim Walsh got involved, another chase driver. And it appears to be gist of the drivers involved unless somebody's sitting on pit road which I don't think is the case but Tim Walsh remember we were saying it was good race bad race good race bad race well if that trend was to continue he was to have a good race today and doesn't look like that's the case damage on the front left and right side of his 5 hour energy Chevrolet Dylan Pote badly damaged and I believe Seth Cole has already retired from the race. Drivers are not making pit stops under this caution flag. So that may indicate that they are good to go on fuel perhaps the rest of the way. However, none of these drivers, I believe, ended up taking tires when they came to pit road the uh, last caution. But uh, maybe the tires can last long. Who knows? Anyway, we're under caution for the second time today. Let's take a look at a replay of what happened. And again, another four-wide situation. There you see... Tim Walsh going to slide up, gets hooked off the nose of Dylan Young, collects Seth Cole on the high side there, and sends Dylan Poteet into the wall as well. That's a hard impact again, as Tim Walsh's car went up and actually rode the safer barrier. And it's a wonder that car didn't flip over. It's a wonder he did not flip onto his roof. Fortunately, the car comes back down on all four wheels. He was able to actually drive away from that incident, believe it or not. All three drivers were, but again, fast speeds here at Michigan, resulting in high-octane speed wrecks. We saw Blaine Keys get airborne. Tim Walsh gets airborne there and rides the wall. Some hard licks being taken here today at Michigan International Speedway. Well, the green flag will come back out. We will have six laps remaining. Oh, I'm sorry, not six. Ten laps remaining in today's race. Sorry, I read the ticker wrong. And we have two more drivers out of the race. Dylan Poteet and Seth Cole. So, a tough day so far for Tweenix Racing. They've only got uh, one driver, I believe, that's still in this race. And that is Trent Dunham. Top 10s, we go back to green. Jake Baskinger leads the way. Second place is Dallas McIntosh. That cheese at Ford. Where did he come from? Ryan Acosta there in third. Kyle Matthews fourth. Mason Woods worked his way back up to fifth. Joshua Lee sixth. Benjamin Miles runs in seventh. I believe he was near the rear of the field under the, uh, the last caution. So he's worked his way up nicely into the top 10. William Brock there in eighth. Mason Powers in ninth. And our pole sitter Carson Scott still sitting there in the 10th position. One driver that was probably very glad to see that caution flag was Anthony McCurry because that's two more spots on the racetrack that he picked up with the retiring of Poteet and Seth Cole. So now McCurry is currently situated in, well, he's actually now 36 because of the damaged machine of Tim Walsh. So little by little, McCurry picking up spots on track and points in the standings. Green flag back out. 10 laps to go here at Michigan. Will we race back to the checkered flag under green flag conditions? 
Three wide there for third place. Mason Wood, Kyle Matthews, and Ryan Acosta not wasting any time. Mason Wood's got a real strong Bass Pro Shop Chevy. We saw that early on. He was the first one to have a lead change here today when he worked his way by Carson Scott. And now he's going to try and go back for that lead as now he works over Dallas McIntosh for the second position. Joshua Lee, though, he's got thoughts about the lead. He's going to peel down to the inside three wide. That's for second place, but Wood's going to clear him, at least for now. But here comes Joshua Lee with help from Mason Powers. Here they go into one. And Powers still hangs on to the second position. Powers, or make, or make that uh, Wood hangs on to second place. Got the wrong Mason there. Baskinger looking at his rearview mirror, loving it, although he may not love what he's going to see now because the Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet out of Stuart Haas Racing of Mason Wood has cleared everybody else, and now he's got Jake Baskinger all to himself. Ryan Acosta now moving by for third place. McIntosh looking for fourth, and here comes Trent Dunham trying to give Tweenix something to smile about today as two of their drivers already retired. Trent now moving by Mason Powers for the fifth position. And you saw right there he moved up the track, almost door banged the 44. That was a little testy there in turn one. Mason Wood right on the back bumper of the thriving Ford. And he better make a move soon because here comes Ryan Acosta bringing Dallas McIntosh and Trent Dunham along with him. Out of the top five, there are four wins. Two for Baskinger, one for Acosta, one for Trent Dunham. Mason Wood and Dallas McIntosh have yet to find victory lane this season. We updated where Anthony McCurry was running. How about the drivers trying to run him down in the point standings? How about Joshua Circuli, last week's winner from Zen Joltis? Right now he's running in the 17th position, beginning to work his way up towards the top 10. Working underneath Emmanuel Hartnett, now next in line would be Holden Gluba in the 55. So he's starting to make strides here late, trying to work his way towards the front. How about the 42 of Noah Cars? Came into today's race 36 points out, and he's going the wrong direction. He's falling back to 33rd, and it looks like Anthony McCurry is actually picking up spots on track right now. Look at that. He's bypassing Levi McIntyre. He got by Ryan Madden. He's bypassed Noah Carr. So is that car up to speed, perhaps? It may have worked on that machine under this last caution flag. And it looks like he may be up to speed right now. Right now, just outside the top 30. Benjamin Miles in the 25 came into this race fourth in points. Right now, he is side by side with John Arndt. He scored 24th last time by, this time by 23rd. Trying to make strides towards the front. Circuli is now up to 13th place in the 27. As Baskinger still continues to hang on to the lead, there'll be four to go next time by. The last thing Baskinger wants to see is the drivers behind him form up single file like they're doing right now. That's going to allow him to get a great run down the front straightaway, and Ryan Acosta's going to try and use it. Here he comes. Can he get to the inside of Baskinger heading into one? Yes, he can. He dives to the inside line. Baskinger went down to block, but there's nothing he could do. And here comes Ryan Acosta trying to take the lead. Mason Wood right there in second or in third place, waiting to take second. And now Baskinger will begin to get freight trained, but whoa, Acosta moves up to the high side. That may not have been the best of the idea because here comes Mason Wood putting his Chevy to the inside line. There's a couple other drivers up here in the front of the field we haven't talked about. How about Dylan Young? Got involved in the first wreck of the day. He's up in the top 10 right now. The 19 of Cooper Siron is now up here in the mix. And also, how about John Cittadino in that 72 car? A go or go homer, had to race his way in. He's up here. And Joshua Circuli, last week's winner, looking for an unprecedented fourth win. He's now up in the top 10, as Srigley will take the lead now. Joseph Srigley went to victory lane a couple weeks ago, his first career win at Lime Rock. He's trying to pick up his second one in what would be a matter of three weeks. Cooper Siron right there in second. The closest siron has been to a victory was all the way back at Pocono. And now he's looking to the inside line, and he is there. 
side by side for the lead, Toyota, Chevrolet. Then behind them, a Chevrolet and a Ford in Trent Dunham and Dallas McIntosh. It'll be the white flag next time by. Siron by half a car length, pulls out, now clears for the lead. White flag displayed. One more lap to go here at Michigan. Can Siron hang on? Swrigley still in second. Look at Baskinger going three wide there with Joshua Circuli and Ryan Acosta. Single file amongst the top three, top four. Cooper Siron gonna do a lot of mirror driving as they're three wide for fifth. Here comes Dallas McIntosh to the inside line looking for second place off Strigley. Can't make the move. Out of turns three and four. Will Strigley be able to make a move on Siron? Coming to the checkered flag. Strigley. No move is made. Cooper Siron hangs on. He'll capture his first win of the season here today at Michigan. And that is the fifth win of the season for Joe Gibbs Racing. That is the fourth driver out of those stables to go to victory lane. Jeremy Jones has done it twice. Rocco Twyman's done it once. Cody Lamas who failed to make this race, has a victory at M&M's. And now the sweep is complete for Joe Gibbs Racing. Cooper Siron, their fourth ride, goes to victory lane today here at Michigan. Coming from practically out of nowhere, Cooper Siron wins this race. Man. Great racing here today at Michigan International Speedway for sure. And Cooper Siron takes the checkered flag. Joseph Srigley gets second. Dallas McIntosh in third. Great run for the 05 and 16 go or go home drivers who had to race their way in and knock out Q. Trent Dunham in fourth. William Brock's going to get fifth. Jake Baskinger is the highest finishing chase driver in sixth. Chris Dowd finishes the day out in seventh. So another solid outing for that driver. Joshua Circuli in eighth, so it'll be interesting to see where he and McCrory are situated after today's race. Je uh, Jeremy Jones gets ninth, and Johnny Gardner, we never talked about the Mobile One Ford today. Solid run in the tenth position. As you look on down through the rest of their finishing results, the rest of your chase drivers, Mason Powers finished in 14th, Rocco Twyman was 19th, Joshua Lee faded from view late, he finished in 20th place, Benjamin Miles all the way back to 24th, and then as you look on down through the remainder of the field, Keen Eddington back in 29th. Noah Carr slipped back to 32nd. Anthony McCree finished out the day in 35th position. Tim Walsh finished last car on the lead lap in 37th. And then the only chaser to finish out of the race was Blaine Keyes in 41st. Now, McCree finished in 35th place. And to my knowledge, he did not lead a lap. Joshua Circuli finished in 8th. That is a separation of 27 points, which means McCrary will more than likely still have the points lead, but if my calculations are correct, he'll have it by only five points over Joshua Circuli heading into next week. It may come down between those two drivers because Noah Carris, Benjamin Miles, Joshua Lee, Keen Eddington, they did not have good runs today, so I think they're going to lose more ground than they gained today. It may come down between McCrary and Circuli in the next few weeks. They'll be separated if my math is correct, by only five points heading into next week's event. Speaking of next week, the Hershey's Cup Series heads to Florida. The track that is normally considered the Sprint Cup Series finale will play host to chase race number eight here in the Hershey's Cup Series. Homestead Miami Speedway is next on the schedule for these drivers before we head to the high banks of Talladega Super Speedway and the season finale at Auto Club. Once again, congratulations to Cooper Siron on the victory here today at Michigan. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give us a big like, subscribe to Kavar the Crew today. Here's your full finishing results first on down through 42nd from today's event. Coming up next are your overall points days and your chase points heading into next week as you've been watching a production of the NCAA Offline Racing at its best.